Today we'll be covering how to get to Vestir as a lion. So you start out by talking to this guy at the Stormwind Harbor at the North Dock. Okay. Now at this point a lot of players actually get confused right away at the beginning and the reason is that the quest doesn't really tell you that you have to basically stand here and wait for these guys to talk. That's what the trigger that actually sets the quest off. After these guys talk for quite a while the ship does show up eventually so you'll have to just take my word for it. Might want to make a snack while this is going on. Anyway, the ship eventually does arrive, you get on board, and you take off for the high seas to apparently fight some horde, although it doesn't actually happen. Um, you get attacked by some Kraken tentacles or something along those lines uh, before that happens. So with the Kraken attacking, you're, uh, you get thrown off board, and you, overboard rather, you get saved by this guy, this earthen ring shaman guy, in a bubble, and you wind up waking up on the ship. Uh, now they first send you on a simple collect quest. You basically dive out the bottom of the boat and then pick up stuff off the ground. Uh, there's just a few items, it doesn't take very long. Okay, next they send you out to rescue some soldiers. Now, I do want to show you a trick I use for these soldiers. You can see them floating here, and you just right click the item and it saves them, right? Well, they're a little hard to spot sometimes with all the other stuff going around, so what I do is I make a macro. Go to your hit escape, go to your macros, click new. Pick any button you want, it doesn't matter what your icon is, it's just for your reference, and then put in a, a name, slash slash target drowning soldier and then hit it uh, then drag the icon over to your bar now you press the icon and it'll select the nearest drowning soldier so when a drowning soldier is selected that tells you not only is there one in range but also tell you can also see it easier because there is a green circle around it so you can swim over to the drowning soldier click the button and it will save them and when you're doing so I've found a bunch of others now you gotta go fight some more uh, creatures they send you on just a bunch of killing quests now, don't pay too much attention to my numbers there I am actually playing a pre-made with a whole bunch of really horrible gear so that's why my numbers are bad but anyway so you the next quest does send you to pick up stuff off the ground now you can technically pick the stuff up anywhere but it's a lot better to go over to these pirate ships they're these they're not pirate ships but these down ships over here and you can actually fight these goblins and uh, you do find a lot more stuff over here. Plus, there's a quest to kill eels. Okay, there's one of the treasure chests you gotta you gotta loot. So I'm also gonna be killing goblins, and I want to show you uh, the loot that they actually drop when you kill them. They go down real easy. And they also drop the quest items you need, in addition to being on the floor. Okay. Then you can also fight these eels, as you can see here, and they give you a quest as well. Okay, so moving on from the eels and the goblins, you go back to uh, your base, and then you have to do this little this little defense uh, event, I guess you can call it. You get attacked by a bunch of the nagas, but they eventually, uh, after you kill them, will capture you and swim off, and you can't do anything about it. Fortunately, however, you are rescued by the shaman with their lava burst, so everything will be fine. Now, they send you in a couple of quests. Uh, first, of course, you're going to get your seamount, so it's about time. You're not going to have to swim anywhere anymore. So now, uh, what you do is, first you go to one of these sea turtles out here on that you see on your mini-map, and you will actually uh, pick him up, but this is not going to be your mount because there's a twist, and a shark will come, and it will eat your turtle. Oh, no. But that's okay. You did it right. Don't worry that is supposed to happen. So now you go back to the base and um, your shaman buddy is going to uh, send you on the next leg of the quest which is to collect the seahorse. Now what you do for the seahorse is you just click on that rope that's right over there next to the next to the guy and a seahorse will appear. When the seahorse appears you right click it to jump onto it and it launches you into kind of a mini game of sorts. And now what you do is you press these little arrows like it says lean right, if you press the right button then there's lean right again, so you press the right button again. And now that you've completed the quest, you've got your sweet mount, so let's get it out of the mounts tab. So there's your brand new seahorse mount. How cool is that? Now you can swim on seahorse everywhere you go. So no more swimming. And now I want to point out that the mount's uh, icon says 450% swim speed that's not uh, that doesn't mean it's faster than a flying mount that just means it's 450 percent of your swim speed and your swim speed is much slower than your land speed obviously so once you're done tooling around on your sweet new ride uh, go talk to your quest giver and they will send you in the next leg of the quest what you have to do is go rescue this girl out in the kelp forest uh, not hard to find you can just follow your your map after you rescue her it's going to take you to the smuggler's cove Okay, now I do want to talk about the Smuggler's Cove for a minute because there is a bug associated with this quest in the current beta build. Now, I mean, this may be fixed before release, but because I did report it, but I just want to point it out. You swim over to this cave, as you see from the, uh, it's very easy to spot because there's all the plant life outside of there. You go in here, there is a flight path. Now, at this point, you can actually leave and go fly back to, you know, Ironforge to civilization and come back anytime you want, but I will show you that later. 
first I want to show you how to uh, finish this up. But what you do is you go out here, and if now you're supposed to go out here and signal the uh, NPC, but if you get on your seahorse, it's a bug. Now, like I go on the seahorse, and it shows the shows my character waving. And if you watch in the in the uh, chat log in the bottom left, it Aldera says, you know, come inside for your reward or whatever. So I'm out here, and I'm like confused, like okay, what where is she? What happened? So what's actually happening here is there's a bug. If you're on your sea mount and it doesn't complete the quest properly, don't worry though, it's not uh, game over or anything. You can actually just go and redo it. What you have to do is first go back inside and sit here and say, what's going on? Now, after it prompts you again, it says, leave Smuggler's Cove to signal Adar. Now you swim out here without your mount, and it will work just fine. Once you get out here, it'll show you wave, and then she'll appear. So that is just a note I want to make in case this problem is still avail still around at live, so you don't get confused. So she does come back, and there you see her swimming there, so now that you know you've done this properly. So you go back inside the cave, and uh, she's now a regular quest NPC. This becomes your first real kind of functional quest hub because you you do get an NPC pretty quickly that has repairs, so you can sell, repair, and buy basic supplies uh, in just a short while here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is kind of move on uh, and skip most of the quests that that come from this. I mean, they're very simple. Obviously, if you've gotten this far in the game, you know how to do a quest. I don't need to show, hold your hand through everything, but you basically just uh, you, there's about 20 minutes or so worth of questing, maybe faster, um, if you uh, know exactly what you're doing. Once you're done with the quest, they send you back to your friend Eunuch, the guy who saved your butt like a hundred times. So you, uh, what you want to do is talk to him and then get, uh, use his little scrying orb thing he gives you. And what that does is it sends you on a, I guess, a vision quest or whatever. Uh, and uh, you float around in your little vision quest until you find a cave and you spot the guy, uh, the last member of the little, of the, uh, of Bud's expedition. I didn't mention it before, but these NPCs you're saving are uh, from Bud's expedition. You might remember them from the troll place in, um, what you call, in, um, Zulaman and also in, uh, in Wrath of Lich King. Oh, what was it called? I forgot what it's called. Anyway, so anyway, you go to this cave now. I want to pause it here and point something out. When you go to this cave, if you look on the mini-map, there's a yellow question mark on the left, just to the southwest of your icon. It's That is actually wrong. The position on the mini-map of that quest, that, 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 that turn-in NPC is wrong. What you have to actually do is swim into the cave to the other side. So, again, this is another bug that I've reported and hopefully will be fixed by release, but just in case you're confused, what you have to do is not go to where it shows you in the mini map, just go through this cave all the way to the end and you find your next uh, NPC hideout, your next little hub. Uh, there's gonna be one more after this one too. So once you go in here, yeah you see how far off that is, once you go in here you go turn that in and you will finally get quest credit and uh, continue. Now after fighting, after talking to this guy, it kind of starts like another defense event where you get attacked by the Nagas again, just like it happened in the ship. Um, but first he does send you on, on another vision quest. I guess they, this game just loves its vision quests. So you go on that and you look at the water for a bit, nothing special. So I'm going to skip the rest of it because you don't want to see all that. But anyway, you come back and there is a little battle going on. You fight these guys. After you kill enough of these guys, the boss appears. It reminds you of the centaur quest all the way back in the Barrens, if you played Horde. So once you kill these guys, you, the, the boss comes out, he's an elite. Uh, it tells you when he appears too. Now he's not powerful at all and he does get tanked by your allies. So don't sweat it. Don't say, oh it's an elite, I'm scared. No, don't worry about it. He's very weak. You just kill him quickly. And again, please don't pay attention to my awful numbers. I know they're really pathetic, but it's just because I'm, I'm playing a pre-main with all green. with like a I have like a caster mace as my main hand weapon. It's like 1.6 speed main hand. It's ridiculous. But anyway, so once uh, once you finally kill this guy, the event ends uh, with a tidal wave or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, it was kind of confusing. I don't really know what's going on here, but you do get hit by a tidal wave or something, and um, I suppose this one of your allies is casting it to save the, the you know, wash away the, the Nagas or something, but whatever. The point is, the battle's over, and it takes you to the next stage. The uh, next uh, whole, the next little cave you go swim into is just outside that one. It's real easy to find. So you swim out here. Go through here, and now you're in the next proper base. This is going to be your uh, base of operations for the next long series of quests. Now, I'm not going to do any of these quests here for this video because at this point, you know, you're really established, you're in Vashtir, you're ready to go. So what I'm going to instead show you is the flight path. And you see there's a seahorse flight path there. You look in the middle one, and it says, it says a sandy beach or something like that, something to that effect. So you click on the sandy beach, 
and you'll actually it's actually a swim path you will actually swim up to the sandy beach and this is how you leave this is how you leave and enter okay so I just want to show this to you before we go so that you know what to do so you swim up to the beach when you get up here there's actually a proper flight path master so it's almost like you're back on civilization already and as you can see that actually does take you to Iron Forge. okay now if you turn back around if you want to leave if you want to go back to the vast years what I mean you go back to your seahorse guy right here on the on the edge and he will take you back in to where you want to go so that's it that's it for the guide thanks for watching